Greetings to you all at home. My name is Valen Kirtley. Welcome to another exciting episode of the Ladies Club, your leading women's talk show here in Mzanzi. And we thank you for tuning in as we chat to trailblazers and game changers in women in sport. And of course, like I will on social media platform Sarona, 70 sang hashtag the ladies club at Valen Kirtley at Lebo Mutswedi at Sport at SABC. So today we're going to be chatting about women who have transformed the game of netball, pushing boundaries in the sport, and there is no doubt that netball has played an important role in the lives of so many South African women and girls. It's widely played across the country and remains the second most popular sport after football. And our netball ladies continue to excel locally while some are making waves on the international stage. They are of course pushing boundaries in the game as well and we'll chat more about these women as the show continues. Well as you know by now it's our tradition right here on the ladies club to get the ball rolling with an inspiring quote. This week's words of wisdom come from South African and American actress and film producer Charlize Theron. She says, you are only as great as the opportunities that mm. are given to you. Sure. Now, the Oscar winner came to international prominence back in the 90s. She has appeared in the films The Devil's Advocate, one of my favorite movies of all time, Mighty Joe Young, Prometheus, and Snow White and the Hunts Men. She won the Best Actress Academy Award and Golden Globe back in 2003 in the movie The Monster. Monster, rather. Yeah, I mean, she completely transformed for that role. But I really love yeah. the quote, which says, is, you know, you're only as good as the opportunities that How you get given. Is that? But you know what's also quite interesting? Because I always, you know, when, when when people mention something, we say, you know, um, uh, I give credit to the opportunities that were given to yeah. me. But I also think that uh, it takes you to see the opportunities. opportunities yeah. You know, because I think that there are opportunities lying in yeah. so many different areas. That's true, because we could be given the same opportunity and I could choose to look at it in one way it's like it's like a picture that i've seen on social media uh where there's two people riding in a bus talk about opportunity one is looking out at the beautiful scenery and one is looking at the mountain on the other side of the bus and miserable and the other one is looking at oh my god this is beautiful i'm looking at a beautiful scene so it's just opportunity lying there always waiting for you to grasp it with both hands yeah, so just uh, look at it through the eyes that there is opportunity in absolutely every situation that you're in. Speaking about opportunities... Yes, we're not going to take a quick break, no? But before we do, let's take a look at what's making news in, in state, uh, Valen, where Australia has now set out guidelines to make sport more inclusive for transgender and gender diverse people as it now works to change attitudes and also limit uh, di dis what is it? Discrimination. Dis discrimination. Yeah, so this move comes as debate rages globally about whether trans transgender athletes, all those with differences of sexual development, have an unfair competitive advantage. And the guidelines cover everything from victimization, leadership and codes of conduct to suitable facilities, privacy and the collection of personal information. That is a big talking point as well because I also just read a recent story, I'm sure you know about it, the track athlete that is a transgender and beat the female athletes and the female athletes were saying, but hold on, it's, it's, you are having an unfair fair advantage so I think it is something to unpack in the future as well definitely and I think when it comes to these issues of uh, of, of gender we have to be rather sensitive and also educate ourselves because a transgender person is different to somebody that mm. uh, uh, that that is got differences in sexual development so I think you know before we start making wide-ranging claims or, or judgments we actually have to understand the landscape quite well and I think that's the point at which we are at is it's mm. just generally people understanding these concepts a little bit better absolutely we're going to take a quick break when we come back our game changer Chinam Dao joins us thereafter stay with us Welcome back, you're watching The Ladies Club. Please join us on social media, join in the conversation because you know we have a lot of hot topics to speak about here on The Ladies Club. Our hashtag across all social media platforms is so easy. Hashtag The Ladies Club at Lebamotswiri, at Sport, at SABC, mm. at Bell and Kirti. Those are our handles on Twitter. 
Absolutely, Valen. And now we're joined by a very dynamic netball star and University of Pretoria winger tag, Kichi Nam Dao. And she is our game changer today. She is a talented netball player who makes her presence felt every time she steps out onto the court. She started playing netball back in primary school and has since been fine-tuning her skills. The sharp winger plays for the uh, Gauteng Jaguars usually, but this past uh, Telkom Netball Premier League, she was actually playing as part of the Smiley's team. She excels in her playmaking role using her fiery power, strength, speed and ability to change the direction in the blink of an eye and also affect the direction of the game. Okay, I can almost see her smiling as wow. we're talking about it. Gina, welcome to the ladies. Club. Hello and thank you for having me. You well, guys we, make me sound so well, we amazing. Accurate. So accurate. <laughs> so accurate. Is that you then? That amazing soul? That is me, I think. <laughs> <laughs> Where did the passion and the love for netball come from? Because as we said, you started playing in primary. Is it mm. something that you've always loved doing? Uh, definitely. I think uh, netball brings a whole bunch of girls together so we were kind of all forced to be friends yeah and in primary school it's girls and boys so it doesn't matter who you are we all just were kind of one big family unit in a sense we in grade one we don't know each other so we all became friends the whole grade so it was a fun way to make friends and ever since that day i just fell in love with netball Wow. Uh, but netball wasn't the only sport that you did as a youngster. You were involved in squash, in athletics, did a little bit of swimming. So you were quite the sporty child. Yes, indeed. Uh, my parents kept me well busy. Mm -hmm. So I did a bit of everything just to try out stuff and see if it will fit with me and my personality. And eventually I just chose netball. And tell me about your family background in terms of your parents keeping you busy. Were they active in their times as well? Or is, is it like a family thing to say, you know what, let's just keep her busy for the sake of keeping her busy? What was the reason behind that? Well, I have two brothers. So it was, um, as my dad would put it, he has three boys. So he had to keep <laughs> us all busy. Um, he was a... Uh, a comrades marathon runner wow. so he was a bit more sportier than my mom who was more of a spectator number one supporter kind of situation That's also busy. always always <laughs> i mean taking the kids around being there so yeah my parents were very involved in our upbringing and sporting um opportunities yeah. and just making sure that we all get the best of whatever's offered out there throughout our schooling Yes. Uh, but you're the only one of uh, the siblings that's actually taken sport more seriously, isn't it? Yes, I, I, I took it a bit too, too extreme. But um, my brothers are sporty and we do play netball when we're bored. Um, mm. I have a nephew who I'm teaching how to catch ball. But yeah, I think he's more of a kicking type of person. <laughs> yes. And when did you realise, because you started at such a young age, when did you realise that actually... Um, I want to take this longer, further, uh, as you get into prov provincial mm -hmm. leagues and setups. Did you think, okay, SA, I'm going there? Uh, funny enough, not at all. Um, I got to the University of Pretoria, uh, wanting to do athletics, actually, looking for a coach, going professional in athletics. Um, failed to find a coach, and then the netball courts were right next door. Uh, so I went, played social netball. I uh, was told I was a bit too good to play social netball and from that day forth kind of learned what it takes to be a professional netball player because it was totally different from high school to university. Uh, put in the hard work and then about three years ago I, I realized that I can actually go all the way with this. So that's when my sure. dream of a pro tier began. All right, and you then were selected, and I understand that once upon a time, you were the youngest member of the Proteas training squad. Yes, I was when I was 20, um, while still trying to figure out if I love Nepal or not. Uh, went to a seniors tournament with all the Aaron Burgers, Amanda Maynards, the Melissa Mayberg. So it was a very great, phenomenal Proteas team back then. Uh, being the new kid on the block, mm. uh, trying out, um, Apparently, I played well enough to be recognized, and from that day forth, I was in the squad. We spoke about opportunities yeah. presenting themselves yes. and grabbing them with both hands. That's it certainly so looks as if that's exactly what happened for you. Indeed, it did. But, I mean, it, it also speaks volume about the talent that you have, because you've only just started three years or so ago, and you realize when you're saying three years ago that 
Uh, okay, maybe, maybe I really do want to play mm. for the Proteus. Uh, whereas other people would look at that dream and start working on it um, in high school. Mm. So you must really be talented and passionate uh, about the, the netball that you play. I am very um, talented, uh, blessed. Uh, but I think it's, as we talk about opportunity, it's seizing the opportunity yeah. and seeing that as much as you love the sport, it's talent can only take you those True. so far. Um, it's about putting the hard work, the, the sacrificing, the scheduling, uh, being a student athlete. So trying to do it all, but yet again, excelling in everything you do. So it is all about opportunity at the right time in the right place. Mm. Uh, tell us a little bit about that first call up for the, for the Proteas, because you played as part of their Fast Five team. Yes, um, it was an eye opener. Um, yet again, it was taking another step up. Yeah. Uh, bring up, I was good, but I had to be better. I had to be more mature quicker. So um, being in the squad opened opportunities to Fast Five, which is a different type of netball to the normal sevens netball. Fast Five is only five people on court, um, a lot of speed, a lot of um, strategic passes and shooting. So uh, playing Fast Five in the World Cup, I think it was 2016, mm -hmm. um, it was a blessing. It was everything was lights, camera, action. I just didn't know what to do. Um, but yet again, my coach, luckily at that time, reminded me that basics count. So yeah. whatever you know, whatever you've been doing this far, got you here. So as soon as it feels overwhelming or too much, um, just remember that it's, it remains netball at the end of the day. True. And what was one of your biggest fears, uh, or some of the biggest fears? getting that call and representing South Africa on that stage? Uh, playing against the greats <laughs> of Nepal, um, just seeing those big names from overseas and they standing next to court to you, well, next to you and saying hello and you're like, oh, okay, maybe <laughs> this, is, this is really happening. This is, um, I think the fear is just not choking up and actually freezing and not being able to actually showcase the talent you have and the skill that has been um, Part it onto you. Um, so that was my biggest worry, just maintaining um, composure and being able to bring my A game at all times. Mm. How important was it that uh, you happened to find the netball goal, but specifically at Tux, uh, at a place where uh, netball is valued, where there mm. are really good players, and where you go into a structure where you've got so many great netball minds to actually feed off? Um, it was... It was it was so real in a sense because it was literally it's a different world to the normal netball I was used to in high school. Um, getting to tax and netball is basically a career. Mm -hmm. It was a big I, like I had to adapt on my mindset on what I want, what's important. Um, it for me it opened a lot of doors and I'm super grateful to them. Uh, yeah, so going to tax playing netball there was life-changing. It's, it's funny you mention netball as a a career mm -hmm. while you are now also doing your honors I think in agricultural yeah. economics yeah. so you wanted to also go into that as a career and then now you're thinking okay netball is also a career. Opportunity opportunity so it's always <laughs> having options between the two. Yeah. Uh, netball in our country is not as sustainable and as financially rewarding yeah. as other countries so having the passion is all great but yet again as you grow up you realize more responsibilities uh, bills to pay and everything so that's why you kind of need a, a backup plan which I found in agriculture economics and thoroughly enjoy it and wow. giving back to my country and making sure it's sustainable and agriculture is a big deal as much as it's overlooked um, I think if we go back to our basics, I mean, we all started off as farmers. So imagine going back, feeding the world and making it a better place. Sure. Wow. She is a lady <laughs> of so many different talents and so many different ambitions. So we're going to continue chatting to our game changer when we return. But before we go to the break, let's take a look at what's making news. VAR has come under the spotlight in the FIFA Women's World Cup in France. A few weeks back, distraught Cameroon players staged a series of 
of extraordinary on-field protests over VAR decisions following England's 3-0 win in Valenciennes, and that was during the round of 16. My goodness, and the protests took uh, the gloss off the England win, of course, and it's the second biggest at the final stages, with angry manager Phil Neville claiming they had damaged the image of women's football in front of a big global audience, and I think it was definitely warranted uh, because the VAR decisions have been anything but shocking. It certainly has been the player of the match on so many occasions at the FIFA World Cup. Absolutely. <laughs> All right, so now for us to take a break, we'll be back. Remember, you can continue the conversation on social media. Hashtag the Ladies Club. We'll be back after this. Welcome back, Rinzaritsuela Pueleka, Di Puosarunats, Adi Papadi, with incredible women in sports, our game changer, Lena Kajenemo, now most of you are the ladies' club. Before we continue our conversation with Echina, let's bring you our trailblazer today. She's netball player Mareika Holtzhausen. Mareika was a member of the South African national netball team that competed in the 2010 Commonwealth Games in Delhi and the 2011 World Netball Championships in Singapore. She also participated in the 2010 World Netball Series and 2011 wow. World Netball Series, both held in Liverpool. Wow, and she's blazed the trail when she became the first player in South Africa to lineup in the UK's leading competition, the Netball Super League, after joining uh, some really incredible stars in the 2015 season. Now, in November 2018, she was awarded her 100th national camp, becoming only the second player in the national team history to achieve that feat. Now, chatting to China here in studio, incredible woman such as Marika, what kind of influence and what kind of foundation and... Um, what, what do they mean to the upcoming netball players of South Africa? They have set a standard that one only dreams to achieve. And them being actually amazing humans and great sisters and mm. leaders, it's, it's amazing just to see them achieve what they set out. And yet again, following in their footsteps, it's just hopefully we can just live up to the standards that they have set for us. Mm. Uh, we're speaking about Mareika now, and mm. she's also the captain of her a Netball Super League mm. team in the UK, Savern Stars. Yes. Uh, is being a captain something that you aspire to do? Um, on a national stage, um, I just want to play Netball. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> but right now, I am fortunate to be the captain of the Tax One team. So leadership is in my range of skills <laughs> but for now I just I'm enjoying playing netball. Gina what has been your greatest achievement so far? It will definitely have to be graduating uh, but netball wise being the top 20 netball player so basically they chose a squad of 20 and this year for the World Cup and just being named into those amongst those great people, I think mm. that is a highlight. I don't necessarily have to be representing my country, yeah. but just being recognized as one of the greats or amongst the greats just means the world to me. So there was no sense of disappointment that uh, you weren't on the plane to Liverpool with the rest of your teammates uh, for the World Championships? I mean, there was, but uh, in looking at the greater picture, I am young, I still need the experience and just maybe sitting on the sidelines and watching is the greatest um, yeah. learning curve you can have as a sports player. So it was disappointing, but you move on and there's still a whole lot of nipples still to be played the rest of the year. So I didn't really lose out on much. And what has been some of your biggest challenges in your netball career? Uh, just being able to um, handle studying and netball. I think that was and will always be the greatest challenge between the two. Uh, I'm just, it's really hard to go to class, write exams and still be a sports star. But um, learning how to balance and schedule and prioritize uh, plays a great deal and helps out in the long run. And I suppose there's that 
final aspect of South Africa playing host to Definitely. the next World Championships. <laughs> Definitely, and it's right at home, so it'll be right up my alley and yeah. something to work towards. Sure. And how do you feel about South Africa hosting the World Champs? I mean, everybody was excited. Celia, uh, mm. obviously, cheerleading everybody else into the great hosting nation that we will become the mother city come <laughs> a couple of years' time. Um, it's about... It's about time yeah. <laughs> that we hosted. I mean, we have such great facilities. And I think as South Africans, sometimes we think so small of ourselves sure. and not um, actually wanting to take that step or uh, take the risk to actually put ourselves on the world stage and see what we are able to do. So having this come to South Africa, I think, will be a great boost for us as South mm. African economically and just socially um, sports brings people together and this is one of the ways of doing it mm. away from the netball courts mm -hmm. who is china china is fun uh <clears throat> enjoy being around people i'm very sociable i love going out learning new things doing new things um i'm super outgoing and yet again, I do enjoy me time, just sometimes mm. just reflecting on what's happening in your life and just mm. zening out is good for one. So how do you zen out then? Series right now. <laughs> <laughs> what series? Ser what are you watching at the moment um, then? Grey's Anatomy. I'm <gasps> watching. The Modern season Family. just ended. I know. Oh, I'm it's just like, what do I do with myself now? I know. <laughs> but yes, I'm a big Grey's and... Um, how to get away with murder, scandal. So repeating a lot of series is also one way to zen out. And I think just seeing a different light or seeing someone differently than my whole sporting life, I think that's how I zen out, just mm. enjoying someone else's lifestyle. Sure. What do you want to do over the next top five years? Where do you see yourself? Working on my career, which is the agriculture part. Um, I'm really passionate about it, and I think it's time for me to actually throw myself into it wholeheartedly as netball is slowing down and then the build-up of the World Cup will come eventually. Uh, training obviously will still happen but right now it's just focusing on my career and building my brand as an agriculture economist and giving back. I think it's time to grow up a bit. Then would you, you sound like you're in a position where you, you've done the best you can with netball. It might have come as a surprise, mm -hmm. uh, but it really, truly, the, it, the agricultural bit of, of you is what you really want to excel in further for now. For now, yes, as I'm finishing my honours this yeah. year. So I think it's time I dive into it and actually explore what it will take to be an economist. And then netball will always be there. I know what I'm wor working towards, so yeah. it becomes easier and the scheduling becomes easier because there is already some sort of routine. So right now it's just staying fit, staying um, in the game, making sure that my skills are enhanced and that's all I can do for now. So I do have time to think outside of Nepal right now. Yes. I like that. Mm. She is making sure that when the opportunity does come, yeah. she is ready. <laughs> she is fit and she is ready to yes. grab it with both hands. Yes. China, thank you so much for coming into the studio and chatting to us. Uh, and we look forward to seeing you playing in the green and gold. Oh, thank you for having me. It's been absolutely amazing having China in studio. That's all we have time for this week. Thank you so much for spending it with us. You remember that you are welcome to send us your ideas of trailblazers, stories about women in sport, and of course, our game changers. <laughs> Remember, until we meet again, that greatness is never, ever given. It's always earned. From myself, Aileen Kirtley, Lebo, and the entire Ladies Club team, goodbye.